In this presentation, we will review the product opcalarm.net, which is part of the full opcsystems.net suite. opcalarm.net provides real-time and historical alarms. With the .NET component, you can organize and sort alarms based upon active state, alarm priority, alarm group, all kinds of different uh, features that you would like to sort your alarms by. We will see how to incorporate the alarm component into a Visual Studio application and we'll see that there's no code required but full programmatic access is possible. We'll see that we can log alarms to SQL Server, Oracle, Access, and MySQL, send notifications to email, and send alarm summary information back to opcsystems.net tags and on down to OPC servers if you'd like. Each licensed server supports unlimited numbers of local and remote alarm client applications. Each alarm client can communicate to multiple services, which allows you to build a very scalable solution. And you can replay historical alarms from a database. You can configure alarms programmatically, manually, and we include a free to use container that you can use locally and remotely. All features of opcsystems.net implement .NET remoting. This allows us to eliminate the need for DCOM and allows us to communicate over the internet. All components of opcsystems.net are 100% managed and support smart client deployment. To see a live example of Smart Client, you can visit the website opcsystems.com and visit the Smart Client page. Let's take a look at the OPC Alarm product in action. After you first install opcsystems.net, we can launch the OPC Systems HMI application and take a look at the real-time alarms that are currently running in the demo configuration. The OPC Systems HMI container is a free-to-use application that you can deploy locally and remotely. Let's get rid of the trend window and focus on the alarm system. Here we see active alarms indicated in red, alarms that have been previously active but not yet acknowledged in purple, and if we can we can acknowledge an alarm just by double clicking on it, that would indicate that uh, alarm has been acknowledged when it's yellow. We can organize and sort alarms by dragging particular columns into the header area. Here we're now grouping alarms by active state. So at the top we see alarms that are currently active. And we can focus on individual groups. As new alarms occur, they will appear in the alarm window. We can also sort by alarm type. Maybe also by priority. These are all ways that you can sort alarms. We can also acknowledge all alarms by selecting the acknowledge all icon. If you want to remove the sorting, just simply drag the column back down into the heading. Alarms by default are sorted by the alarm date and time of when they occur. You can change properties of an alarm window during runtime just by right clicking on the window or selecting the edit icon from the toolbar. Here we can modify filtering. We may want to include alarms that are no longer active and have been acknowledged. If we set that to true, we see all alarms those are indicated by green that have been acknowledged but no longer active. Let's take a look at how to configure the OPC Systems HMI container while we're here. If we select the alarms tab at the bottom, we see a number of pre-configured alarm windows. To add a new alarm window, we select the Add button 
To modify the alarm window properties, we select the button Modify Alarm Window. There we can determine what network nodes we're going to subscribe the alarms from, and we can even communicate across the internet as a data source for the alarms. We can set up filtering. With the filtering we could determine what types of alarm we want to include, what alarm groups we want to include. If we select this property, there's a browse button that appears to the right. Select that button. You can browse a local or remote service for the alarm groups that are currently defined in that service. With no alarm groups defined, that means all alarm groups are included in the filtering. We can specify to include digital alarms, analog alarms, operator events, system alarms, remote communications, and tag events that occur that are defined under configure tags. We can also filter by priority. Let's specify that we only want to include alarms with priorities between 0 to 500. Other properties that we can modify are the types of columns we might want to include. We can include when the alarm was acknowledged. We can include who acknowledged the alarm as a user. That is used together with the security feature that's built into the OPC system service. To show any of the particular columns, just set the visible property to true. You can also change the alarm column width as well. Under the row property, we can determine the row height. Let's give it a larger height. Under the colors, we can specify what color assignments for active alarms. Instead of red for the active alarms, let's choose dark orange. Under the fonts, we can specify the font for each alarm state. For the active state that has been acknowledged, we'll choose an italic format. And for the active font, we'll choose bold with a size of 12. And maybe we can even choose a different font. Let's choose Arial for an active font. Under the custom history selection, we can specify to make custom queries based upon particular fields. To implement this feature, you set the custom history enable property to true, and then we browse for particular fields that we would like to add to the query. Then when you call history, it will use that query statement in returning records from the database. Under the toolbar selection, we can choose the position of the toolbar. Instead of the top, maybe we want to move it to the bottom. And for the size, we can choose small or extra large for those touch screen applications. The grouping property allows us to sort particular columns that we demonstrated earlier. If I uncheck that, we see that the grouping header no longer is available. Now we will assign an alarm window name. Let's call this one Test and click OK. We now see that alarm window appear in our alarm list. To add it to the workspace, click on Add Alarm to Window. There we see the new alarm window, and we can see that the active alarms are now orange, and the acknowledged alarms are the italic font. To save your configuration in the OPC Systems HMI container, simply select File, Save, or to save it to a new location, say File, Save As. 
To log into the OPC Systems HMI, you can click on the login selection, and this way you can enter in a username and password. We can protect alarm acknowledgement based upon security privileges. Now let's take a look at how to integrate the alarm window into a Visual Studio application. To do this, we'll start Microsoft Visual Studio. You can use Visual Studio 2003 with our older 1.1 framework or 2005 or 2008 with the 2.0 framework. Once Visual Studio has started, to launch a new project, we'll select File, New, Project. We want to create a standard Windows application. You can use Visual Basic or Visual C Sharp. The form designer will appear. We can resize our form. To add the alarm control, we use the toolbox. If the toolbox is not available, you select View Toolbox. Here we have already added the component of OPC alarm control to the toolbox, but if you haven't yet done this, you simply right click on the toolbox and select choose items. From the .NET components, we want to make sure that the OPC alarm control is selected and then select OK. Now that the OPC alarm control is in our toolbox, click on it and then in the form designer, hold down your left mouse key and drag the mouse down and to the right to draw a rectangle of the size that you would like the alarm window to be. If you don't get the size perfect the first time, that's okay. You can resize the alarm window with the handles that appear here. To modify properties of the alarm window, simply right click on the alarm window and select properties or hit the F4 key to bring up the property window. The first thing I'd like to show you is a useful feature for all controls and this is the property called anchor. This way we can anchor the alarm window on the form to top, left, bottom, and right. And this way when the form size is changed during runtime, the alarm window will also change with it. If you wanted the alarm window to just be at the bottom, you might choose left, right, and bottom only, and then it sticks to the bottom of the form. To specify the source of where the alarms are going to come from, we use the Alarm Network Nodes property. There's a Browse button that appears to the right. If we select this, 